Welcome back, Lionel Train Mechanics. I was getting ready to restore this 2020 post-war turbine engine, 20-wheel locomotive, and I thought I'd throw it on the track, see how it was working before I restored it, just so I could get an idea of any clues, something to look for, and I usually do that with engines. And it exhibited characteristics. It was jerking, um, similar to what this 1950 F3 did. I remembered when I was restoring it, and it ended up being sticky insides of drive wheels, you know, on the motor. And this just has a single drive axle in the back here with a worm drive. And, and when they kick like this, they start sticking. If they're sticky grease, and I believe it's with high wear also, if the end of the brass bushing on the axle is a little bit wore, it's allowing the side of the wheel to contact the side of the cast, cast metal motor housing and then it sticks and it's jerky. So I'm going to kick this on. I have it at preset voltage. I was trying it out so with no cars and this is a nice way to exhibit. So that's not a motor problem. That's a drive line problem. That it's sticky. So let's hook some cars up to it and see how much worse it gets. I haven't even tried this yet. Yeah, I picked this up on Craigslist with some really nice cars. Haven't had time to restore it till now. Boy, that went smooth. That never happens, does it? We'll kill it with this. We'll just see what happens. Yeah, just like that. That's exactly what has happened to me before. And that's going to be sticky drive wheels on the inside. Oh yeah, this is a perfect exhibit. It's a heavy train too, really heavy train. I was pulling it with the 675 to get the smoke unit cranking. Oh, this one's already smoking. Look at that. Yep, I've seen this before. We're going to fix this. So let's go up to one that I had it apart on the bench. I got it apart. It's a 2020. So the train jerks back and forth because of the way the gear is cut in here. We have a cross cut gear. It's cut like this. So when the motor's turning, it pushes it in that direction. Going forward this way, it's lifting the gear. So when we would reset the train, and, and pull it out and then it would jerk back in and we'd pull it out and it would jerk back in pull it out jerk back in so sure it could be sticking in, inside of that gear right in there but what I've seen before is on the insides of these drive wheels clean all inside all of them any kind of solvent WD-40 um, and you're gonna find a lot of grease all the grease from in here gets forced out and then of course these are from the early 50s usually maybe even the late 40s so that stuff's dried out. The grease is always dried out. I cleaned it all out of here already. There's so much dirt and lint and everything in there. Let's see, let's see what it does when I hit the reverse button. Every time. So that's why, it, whoop, <laughs> that's why it sticks. It sticks on the inside of the drive wheels because it's always moving it to the side like that. So this is why it sticks if the inside of the wheel is sticky is because of that. It took me a day and a half to figure this out. I kept pulling the train apart, pulling the motor apart, oiling things, lubing things, looking at things. I couldn't figure it out. This is going to help you. Every single time this thing wants to take off, it's over to that sticky side. Let's watch that again. That's hilarious. The jerky train. All right, Lionel repairman. We have the 2020 turbine restored. We have it repaired and it's working real smooth. The problem that was making this thing run erratically and hesitate and run erratically forward but not reverse was a little different than the last turbine that I fixed. The last one, as I said, had sticky grease on the inside of the wheels and the inside of the wheels were contacting the center, the metal, in between the wheel sets, 
and uh, that was because it had a worn wheel bearing so cleaning the inside of the wheels made it quit sticking this one was a little different the wheel bearings weren't worn and I took this thing apart cleaned everything greased it restored the motor cleaned the reversing unit uh, tried new side rods and I still couldn't get this thing to operate smoothly and what I found out was the rear wheel set was a little bit uh, wider and the flanges were contacting that second wheel set when this thing would kick to the side because it's a worm drive engine they kind of move one way or the other like this especially if it has magnet traction it's a little more pronounced I believe and it can thrust the wheel into the secondary wheel set there in front of it and I press the wheels together a little bit and it fixed the problem so let's see how smooth this guy is have a real heavy train on this it can barely pull it some die cast cars here it pulled it pulled it really well there but if there was any kind of grade at all or if I put on a couple more cars it can't pull it Look how smooth that is, big difference. Like I say, pressing together the wheels to keep the flanges from contacting the insides of the second wheel set in front of the rear wheel sets, that's what fixed it. So here this guy is, right in here, that flange was contacting the inside of that wheel. It was kicking that way. And when I would spin it, there was no play here. And I was spinning it in reverse. And our problem was in forward. But spinning it in reverse, it would, it would wedge and it would catch. And I would find a point where this guy would not have any play in it at all. And it was rubbing on the inside of that flange on the back side of that wheel. So I thought, well, I can't fix this thing. So there's something wrong with it. I'm going to try it. So I got these channel locks that I happen to have that are perfect for putting wheels tighter on the axle shaft. So I had pulled the side rods off. And these things fit perfectly in between there, keeping it centered on the axle shaft. And I could do both sides. It would center on this side too at the same time. Like I say, taking the side rods off. And I was able to crimp this just a little bit tighter. And the way that it looked before I crimped it, you can see that one's, the axle shaft's pretty flush. In here, if you can get it in the light, you can see that uh, in the axle shaft, there's a little cavity in there. It's, the axle shaft's not flush with the wheel. And, you know, I had nothing to lose. I needed to fix this thing. So, getting the wheel crimped in a little bit more, it's fixed the train. And thanks again, folks, for tuning into the Train Zone channel. 